acute kidney injury. AKI, acute kidney injury, is said to exist when the kidneys suddenly are unable to regulate the volume and composition of urine appropriately in response to food and fluid intake and the needs of the organism. The principal feature of acute kidney, kidney injury is oliguria. The job of the kidneys, guys, is to filter the blood to create urine. So if the patient's kidneys are injured, they're not going to create urine. So the number one sign you're going to see is going to be oliguria. They're not going to be urinating. The principal feature of AKI is oliguria associated with azotemia. All of the toxins that are in the blood are supposed to be filtered out by the kidneys. If the kidneys aren't working, guess what? Those toxins are going to stay in the blood. Patients are going to have oliguria. They're going to have azotemia. They're going to have metabolic acidosis and diverse electrolyte disturbances. Because remember, a lot of those electrolytes are supposed to be coming out in the urine as well. Patients not urinating, they're staying in the patient's system. AKI is not common in childhood. Pathophysiology is usually reversible. In reversible AKI, there's a period of severe oliguria or low urine output followed by an abrupt onset of diuresis. The patient's gonna have high output urine and then a gradual return towards the normal volumes. When you think of AKI guys, I want you to think of these three, these three things, oliguria, they're not urinating the way they're supposed to, edema, because they have all this fluid that they're holding on to, they're gonna be endamitous, and hypertension, all that fluid in the vascular space as well, okay? Significant lab measurements during the renal failure that serve as a guide for therapy. We're going to be looking at the BUN. We're going to be looking at the creatinine. We're going to be looking at that patient's pH. We're going to be looking at the sodium, potassium, and calcium. Below the clinical manifestations of acute kidney injury, oliguria, edema, hypertension. Nursing alert, this is very important. Any of the following signs of hyperkalemia constitute an emergency and must be reported immediately. Serum potassium of seven or higher, presence of electrocardiac abnormalities such as a prolonged QRS complex, depressed ST segment, high peak T wave, Bradycardia or heart block, you're going to report immediately. Therapeutic management. What we're doing for this patient is geared towards decreasing that sodium, decreasing that potassium, decreasing protein. Okay? The treatment of poor perfusion resulting from dehydration consists of a volume restoration. When the output begins to increase, either spontaneously or in response to diuretic therapy, because remember, we're, we're treating this patient, right? We don't want to overcorrect the problem. When the output begins to increase, either spontaneously or in response to diuretic therapy, the intake of fluid, potassium, and sodium must be monitored and adequate replacement provided to prevent depletion of its consequences. Some patients pass enormous, um, enormous amount of electrolyte-rich um, urine. So once the kidneys start to recover, we want to make sure there's not an overcorrection where the patient's losing too much sodium. They're losing too much potassium, <laughs> calcium, right? Remember homeostasis, that's the name of the game. So during the acute phase where the patient's not urinating, the sodium... Um, they're holding on to all their sodium. They're holding on to all their potassium. They're holding on to all their calcium. That's a problem. But once they start to recover, very often that diuresis happens too fast and too much, and then all those electrolytes um, become too low. Complications? If the child's able to tolerate oral foods, foods high, uh, food sources high in concentrated carbs and fat, but low in protein, potassium, and sodium may be provided. Don't gloss over that, guys. 
if they're able to tolerate foods, look what they're saying. We want to give them foods that are high in carbs and fat, but low in protein, potassium, and sodium. In general, during the oliguric phase, this is acute phase, the kidney's not working, no sodium, chloride, or potassium is given unless there are other large ongoing losses. So really, guys, you have to use your critical thinking skills when you're answering this question. It really depends on what phase that patient is in that you know what your nursing inter in intervention and your teaching for the parents are going to be. Hyperkalemia, which can be lethal. Hyperkalemia is the most immediate threat to life of the child with acute kidney injury. Kidney's not functioning. Patient's not getting rid of um, the potassium because the potassium is supposed to be lost in the urine. So now we got all this potassium accumulating in that patient's body. Hyperkalemia can be minimized and sometimes avoided by eliminating potassium from all, all foods and fluid. Patient may get K exhalate. That remember that K and K exhalate stands for potassium, right? So that medication, it helps bind that potassium. So when the patient has bowel movement, it can come out through the stool, right? Other complications. Hypertension. All that sodium that the patient was holding on to. Anemia. Now with anemia, guys. Um, when if the patient needs our, um, blood, remember what they're going to get is the packed RBCs because that's really what they're going to need. That's the problem, the RBCs. You give them the entire packed blood, you give them everything, you're going to cause that hypertension to get even worse because remember, what is hypertension? Hypertension is the amount of force being exerted against the vascular space. So you give them all of those blood components when they only need RBCs, that's even more force being forces uh, against that vascular space. Seizures, so that patient's going to be on seizure precautions, they're going to get anti-eleptic or anti-seizure medications that's ordered, and cardiac failure. We have to be care careful with the fluid. Patient most likely is going to be on diuretics to help get rid of that fluid. Quality outcome. Maintain water balance, control hypertension. Diet maintains calories. Patient's gonna need the calories. Those calories are gonna help them fight, help fight this disorder while minimizing tissue breakdown. That's the catabolism. Metabolic acidosis because of all those electrolytes they're holding on to. Hyperkalemia and uremia. Basically, guys all those components that's supposed to be in the urine, that's from your blood. So basically your blood turning into urine. Nursing management. You're going to do INOs, monitor fluid balance, do vital signs. You're going to limit the patient's fluid intake. Rationing the daily intake in small amounts of fluids. Look at this, guys. We're going to try to trick them. But served in containers that give the impression of large volumes is a strategy because they're going to be thirsty. So make them think they're drinking more fluids than they really are. When nourishment provided by the IV uh, route, careful monitoring is essential. Why we want to prevent fluid overload? The nurse must continually alert for changes in behavior that indicate the onset of complications, such as the hypertension, the anemia, the seizures, the cardiac failure. Infection from reduced resistance, anemia, and general morbidity is a constant threat. Jump to page 1353. Look at this nursing alert. This is important. If a patient's getting dialysis, you can observe the changes in the color of the dialysis draining from the child. The spent solution should be what? Clear. clear. The solution should be clear. If the color is cloudy, you better notify the healthcare um, provider immediately. On the next page, look at this. This is a nursing alert for transplant. <laughs> And this has been seen on NCLEX. Make sure you know it. 
The child with a kidney transplant who exhibits any of the following should be evaluated immediately for possible rejection. Fever, swelling or tenderness over the graft site, diminished urinary output, elevated blood pressure, or elevated serum creatinine. 